Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land. Place of Bionic Vice Gath Birth Plus. Two wins in a row, but as long as the losses are truly garbage, that's the only thing I care about. Yo, look at that damage stat. X3, LQ2, CFA. Rate of fire is, uh... Excuse me, shouldn't you be, um, rendered slow? Oh, look at this. It's like Brock Lesnar's got him stuck in a freaking chokehold. There's nothing you can do, dude. I thought this slowed enemies. But I guess, you know, I'll, I'll accept damage over time instead. I found pills. You think we could beat a whole run? Never actually firing? I'm not gonna do it, because it seems like a supreme waste of time. But in principle, if you don't care about your time, <laughs> maybe that's all you need to do there. So I just realized our rate of fire is actually uh, not the problem. The problem is that our run's success uh, or strength right now hinges on illuminated bulb. But that's a, you know, that's a solution. Masquerading is a problem. What that means in reality is that we have illuminated bulb, which is a nice all stats up. And we also have a spacebar item that's mostly, mostly garbage. So we won't need to use it very often. But I will use it immediately. <laughs> Completely countering what I just said. It's alright, you know? To get this HP in the early game, I think, is substantially more important. It's a Monday afternoon. How you doing? Hope you're not living that Kathy life, you know? Uh, don't like Mondays. On the scale of hating Mondays, there's three different levels. There's a uh, Garfield doesn't like Mondays. There's uh, Kathy, she goes ah Mondays. And then there's um, I don't like Mondays by Bob Geldof's band, which I believe is about uh, somebody committing an act of murder because they oh, tell me why I don't like Mondays. Tell me why you guys know that one? That's not a common song uh, to, to have an awareness of. That's not like, you know, if you bring up songs from the 1980s, not everybody knows that one. If you bring up Billie Jean and people are like, which one's that? You're like, dude, are you like an alien? This is a king of pop. Michael Jackson? Maybe you've heard of him? I don't like Mondays. It's a little bit more of a... It's not a niche banger. I mean, it probably went to like number three. Oh, curse damage, dude. Let me hydrate. Sorry, I was lying to you. Let me caffeinate. This floor, my only dream for this floor is that hopefully we're able to get uh, enough real stats ups that we don't feel bad about using notched axe when we have to. As is right now, I mean, our damage stat is awesome. But a 13 rate of fire, it just leaves a little bit of a subpar taste in your mouth. It's not undoable, you know, unusable. But uh, it, it feels like a, you know, like a movie theater sandwich. Not that satisfying. So, Guppy's head, and you know, I'll level with you. Part of the reason I went risky on this one is just because it'll it'll be more fun this way. Death's list is not actually. Don't kill him! Don't kill him! Thank you. Death's list is not actually that critical to our overall chances here, but why not go for it, right? Get a little. I don't. I can't even tell what we got there because uh, we had other statistical things working out in our favor, thanks to illuminated bulb. But yo, you gotta love it. No, no. Okay, that's fine. Actually, the thing is, Guppy's head kind of desynergizes with the. Uh, with Death's List. Because it makes it a, a lot harder. I wouldn't say impossible, but a lot harder to manually target the enemies you want to take out. But use your brain here. That was a good get. What we want to do is pop Guppy's head. Yo, we got so lucky there. We want to pop Guppy's head when the room is over. Okay, come on. No, no, no. You're a weak enemy. You can't get in my, my sphere of influence here. That's fine. Um... I mean, we want to use it. We just want to make sure we're using it appropriately. And right now, you know, we're, we're not quite there. So we want to 
pop it, good enough. All right. Again, I have no idea whether we're getting value out of this or not. But I'll tell you, as long as we keep our heads screwed on straight here, we might not get Deathless to work on every single room, but we've gotten something out of it. That's for darn sure. I will use a bomb here. Can't complain. We got good stuff going on. I think... I mean, this is, is one where you can't even be like... What negative are you going to focus on? I don't like to focus on the negative in Isaac uh, to be a negative person. I like to focus on the negative in Isaac uh, just to give you a taste. I screwed it up. Uh, of, of where we'd like the run to go to solve our problems, you know? He's done it. But in this run, I mean, really, I, I, you could make a case, I suppose, that rate of fire could be better, but I, I just got a little feeling, you know? In the pit of my stomach, I got that implicit sort of confidence that we're just set on this run. Like, I think we're gonna get Guppy. I, and I just... Oh, it's an XL floor. I also feel like we're gonna get Guppy fast for whatever reason. Now, don't worry about uh, getting your deaths list here. You got to kill the flies. It's got to be done. Do worry about the damage over time. Could add up to save you 30 dangerous seconds or so on the Gertie fight. And HP is the only thing that's not, like, uh, set in stone right here. Oh, I'll take it. <laughs> Yo, you might be able to make this one work. Ah, uh, no. You're not going to be able to make this one work. That's okay. You guys been watching that E3 coverage? I watched, uh... I watched just a little bit today. Just a little bit. I watched a bit of Ubisoft or Ubisoft's conference. It's neat to see, um, and by neat, I mean thought-provoking to some extent, how many subscription services now exist for games. Ubisoft, in case you missed it, they announced their own subscription service. It's like Uplay Plus. It's $15 US a month. Um, and you get access to, I guess, their whole catalog. Video games, they always feel like they, they take cues from, you know, movies, TV, etc., etc. You know, last year we had Movie Pass. Several years ago, we had Netflix, but then, you know, now there's Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus is coming out, CBS All Access, you know, Amazon Prime, etc., etc. Um, it's like the same thing's happening in games now. You got Microsoft Game Pass. You got uh, Origin, EA Access, or whatever the heck it's called. Ah! Now you got Ubisoft Access, like... It's weird. It, I, you know, I've, I've tried to, you know, be a little bit more of a positive guy. But all I'll say on, on this subject is, you know, when it comes to the television, there's a reason I subscribe to Netflix and not to CBS All Access. And it's not because I don't respect Christine Baranski and the television program known as The Good Place. It's because I don't care enough about one specific television network to pay them like really even like a dollar a month to get access to all their shows on demand online. I kind of feel the same about publishers. Like Microsoft Game Pass I got basically just to get access to Sea of Thieves for a free month. <laughs> And I got what I paid for, especially because I forgot to cancel for like eight months. Um, but that's on me. That's not on them. Is that what they're hoping for? No, I honestly don't think so. I honestly, from the marketing surrounding Game Pass, I feel like they, they do want it to be a service that, that people, you know, renew and are excited about. Check this out. He's actually done it. Death's list. But, uh, you know, it's also, it's the sort of, it's a tragedy of the commons, right? Like, I actually, for the most part, I'm pretty, like, you know, pro Ubisoft. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was, was quite good. Ghost Recon Wildlands, pretty good. I liked, uh, you know, I was one of the first on that For Honor train. And then, uh, help. Rainbow Six, huge fan. 
even though I can't get out of Bronze League. Mm, we will take, but only to pick up temporarily. But I still just, it feels weird, you know, to be given... You know, if you have a choice, what makes you choose to give 15 bucks to Ubisoft instead of 15 bucks to EA? Or instead of 15 bucks to, you know... Microsoft, or God knows how many more services. Like, Google Stadia is coming soon, you know. It's the, it's the same thing that happened in TV. When everything was on Netflix, it was like a golden age. People were like, where's that amazing television program? Well, where do you think it is? It's on Netflix. Now it's like, oh, it's, it's only on CBS All Access, but if you get a free preview, you can blah, blah. It's only on Amazon Prime. It's only on Netflix. It's only on CBS All Access. You know, it's only on Hulu. It's only on uh, Show Me. <laughs> it's only on CISO. You know, it never ends. It's, a, you know, when there was only, like, EA Access and Microsoft Game Pass, you were like, okay, dude, 30 bucks a month. And I get access to, like, you know, both of these publishers' catalogs. Now you're like, I don't know, it's going to be, like, $1,000 a month. I'm going to get access to play everything, I guess, but, you know, I'm, I'm not... Every single one that comes out, like, diminishes the few that came before it, in my opinion. But, it, you know, it's not, like, catastrophic, as long as you're still able to... You know, just opt out and then purchase games the old-fashioned way. I don't really mind. The thing is, though, like, feel maybe it's just because I'm quote unquote in games, but I definitely, you know, when I pay 17 bucks a month for Netflix and a bad Netflix show comes out, I don't go, why am I paying for this? But if I'm paying 17 bucks a month, or well, Canadian, I guess it would probably be like 21 or something. If I'm paying 21 bucks a month for Ubisoft. All access, you play plus, and then uh, the crew three comes out and it's kind of garbage. Then I'm like, well, I gotta wait, you know, nine months for my next new release. How many times can I play through Beyond Good and Evil? You know, I guess because there's less, uh, there's less volume. The perceived cost of things not being up your alley makes it a lot worse. Anyway, there's goods and bads. That, that was the big takeaway. Because, like, you know, that's, for me, that's the most interesting thing out of these press conferences is, is almost, like, from a business sense where they're going. Because the big conferences, let's be honest, you know. New Watch Dogs, okay. New Ghost Recon, okay. I'm not anti those, you know. You'll remember who was beating the Watch Dogs drum. At least to a certain extent. While everybody else was going, but it doesn't look like the vertical slice. The texture quality is worse. True. The game, not great. But I did beat it, and I thought it was okay. Anyway. You know, it, what? all I'm getting at is, like, you know, most of the other stuff is kind of, like, it's not even worth talking about from my perspective, because it, it's all cut trailers. I'm not in the business of critiquing trailers, because I just don't care. Oh, this trailer showed blah, this trailer showed blah. You know, if I see gameplay as a different story, but increasingly... Very little gameplay, you know, is shown in these, especially the further away a game actually is from release. Instead, you gotta, you know, focus on the business stuff. The stuff that affects, you know, the almighty Aller that you end up putting in Eve's Guillermo's pocket. So, I don't know. Count me as a... I'm a, I'm a yellow light as far as uh, the subscription services go. I'm kind of like a, if one platform could unify, and I, I don't think it's possible, to be honest, but if one, the, the perfect world scenario is one platform unifies, and then I would pay like a hundred bucks a month. I might even pay more, but, you know, if it was like, hey, you get all AAA releases, no questions asked, at release. Because that's kind of the way, like, at least until recently, Netflix worked, right? You know, no matter what production company the show was made by, came out on Netflix and then, you know, divvy up the profits based on uh, watch time. I get that the games industry is slightly different, but that's... <laughs> I think that's why I'm not as big of a fan of the service... Uh, games as a service uh, platform, at least, as uh, I am of TV as a service. You get what I mean? I don't know. I'm kind of... I'm rambling a little bit, but I think, I, I think I'm getting my point across. Okay, you gotta go first. I screwed it up. I think it, it's... Death's list on this guy is, like, segmented. You gotta kill the right segment first. That's, that's tricky. 
Anyway, that's... Maybe I'll have more E3 related bits. I also, I don't know, man, so here's the thing. This comes up every E3. There's always this dilemma of like, is it okay if you're a member of the media to show excitement if you're at a press conference? And I might be kind of part of the old guard here. I think the maximum you should get to is polite applause. And maybe I'm incorrect on the subject there, okay? But, you know, I think... It, I, I watch these press conferences, and to be fair, when you hear cheering at an E3 press conference, it's not... I'm not going to say it's not ever media, but it's not always media, you know? There's uh, the team that worked on the game. Essentially, I don't want to say this sounds super negative, but there's like, you know, people on the company payroll in the audience. They're not in the audience to make it sound like people are more excited than they are. They're in the audience because they worked on the freaking game. So when their work comes up on the screen, of course they're cheering. But you know, I've been to a few E3 press conferences in my day, and people uh, in the in the press, they do cheer. Sometimes. And not, not everybody in the press, but some people. And I always found it super weird that you, like, you, you get invited to, like, a... Well, I don't know. It's like the... It makes me sound like a curmudgeon to say you shouldn't cheer. I'm just saying, like, you know, cheering for an advertisement. It just gives me the heebie-jeebies to some extent. I mean, it gives me a little uncomfortable feeling in the in the pit of my stomach, you know? It's like sometimes people are like, NL, are you going to wake up early to watch the Nintendo Direct? And I'm like, brother, if you think I'm going to wake up early to watch a commercial, I'll just say you better not have Adblock installed on your PC. Because this seems like a, you know, you got your priorities all mixed up here. There's nothing wrong, especially if you're, like, an end consumer. There's nothing wrong with being excited about something that's coming out. But, you know, we definitely live in an age of hype. Be sure to wake up early. We're going to announce something about the Star Wars theme park. Be sure to wake up early. We got new information about Pokemon Sword and Shield coming out. Add us to your wish list on Steam and you'll get a, you know, a free skin of Bucky O'Hare. I get it. You know, it's marketing. But you also you got to acknowledge, like, where you fit into the chain, I think. I always, I wouldn't say it bums me out, but it would make me very uncomfortable to, to cheer at one of those things. Clap? Yeah. Politely clap. Maybe you can, I, I think, you know, if, if the dude on stage goes, Now, who's a fan of Mario? If you're in the audience and you go, Woo! You know, that's fine too. But... I, I do, it, it always weirds me out when they like show a trailer for something with no gameplay and then there's people just like with their eyes rolling back in their head speaking in tongues. They're like, I can't wait for Watch Dogs Legion. I hope it's good. Don't get me wrong. But it's a commercial. Again, I'm not saying you shouldn't be excited about E3. If it, if it's for, for some people, it's like, uh, it's sweep sweep, you know? If you're a big fan of the gaming industry, it's not just trailers for games. It's also such a high concentration of news, announcements, updates, etc., etc., that you're like, dude, I'm getting overloaded. Most of the time in the games industry, there's like one big news story a week, and it's usually about crunch. <laughs> so to have like a, a feel-good week of news, I can't believe we actually got that one to work there. To have like a feel-good week of news is very nice. I, I don't disagree. I'm just saying, it feels weird for a member of the media to cheer from the press gallery. It's my two cents. Make them work harder for it. Don't don't let them get off easy by, oh, we'll send you an invite to the to the mixer. You know? Make, make them make the masterpiece, you know? Hold their feet to the fire. You bootlickers. Anyway. <laughs> I'm mostly playing it up. I want to know. I got to ask Mathis when he gets back. I know Mathis was at the Microsoft press conference. I'm going to ask him. I don't I don't know if Mathis is a cheerer, okay? But I've never heard Mathis talk about a Microsoft property in my entire life, released after the year of 1998, except one time he did suggest playing some Sea of Thieves. If he went to that conference and he cheered, he and I, we, we have to have a little tete-a-tete. If he went to the Bethesda conference and he cheered, I know my man, you know, he's got a, an affinity for the Fallout series. So I'm not mad about that. You know, that's... He's, he's an enthusiast press. We're all enthusiast press, really. Okay, so I, I've started to lose a little confidence on this run. Just to be honest with you, and none of these items really tickle my fancy. Um, 
is not bad, and we're making great time, but... Where's, where's my guppy dream that I was so confident in? So confident in. I don't know. I think it's like one of those things where you reap what you sow. You know? As a viewer. And I'm, I'm not saying this to, you know, make anybody feel bad. But if you want angry coverage of video games, watch the angry games. If you want a breathlessly positive coverage that basically serves just as an echo to the corporate mouthpiece, um, then watch the people who cheer in the press box. And that's fine. A lot of people are like, dude, my favorite channel is like uh, Mr. Nintendo. I love Mr. Nintendo. Mr. Nintendo goes to all the Mr. Nintendo events. He wears a Mario outfit and he cosplays and he cheers. You know, if that's what you want, at least you know what you want. But if you want... The absolute most objectively correct media coverage in the video game industry, you watch Northern Lion. That's the only, it's the long and the short of it. I'll do it. I, re I don't regret it. But I regret what they gave me. <laughs> That's not how that works, but. Okay, we got something good. And we got it early, which is nice as well. So here's what I think we're going to do. I am going to stop worrying about using uh, Guppy's head effectively. And I'm going to start using it for its intended purpose, which is just as a uh, as a means to generate damage for us. Because I think our stats are absolutely, totally fine, but could be better. So as long as we use it at the end of a room, we still get the statistical bonus. It does screw us up on death's list, but death's list... You know, you really, you like to get it early, so that you maximize your chance uh, of actually being able to use death's list properly. And then, you know, in the late game, I think it can be more harm than good. Depends on the, the setup you got, to be fair, but... Anyway, it's always just stuff that comes up in E3, like, you know, is is different, you know, because I, I, I still remember I used to be a young pup in the business. I would look to the older people in their late 20s, <laughs> the gray beards of the video gaming industry who have not yet had the good sense to get out for something more lucrative like PR. And I'd be like, the way that these people behave is the way that I should behave at events. So that's informed me, you know? And back in the day when I was going to media events with, with writers, it would have been seen as like a like a cardinal sin to cheer at an event. So I'm willing to accept that I probably have too much of a, not a hard line, but like an almost draconian view of, uh, of it. I think people these days, and it's neither good nor bad, I think. It's got, it's got elements of both. I, th I think they're much more open to being, you know, hype generators instead of hype dampeners. And as I've said many times, the only thing that annoys me about it is when you're a hype generator when the trailer comes out. But then when the game comes out, you're like, this isn't exactly like the trailer. And I'm like, yeah, dude. You ever looked at somebody's, like, Facebook profile photo? That's not exactly what they look like in real life, either. It's the best photo ever taken of them six years ago where they were wearing a suit for somebody's wedding. Okay. Well, I don't know why I took it when I knew what was in the... The deal with the devil, and we know that it's nothing because we've already taken Lump of Coal, but it's okay. It's okay. The run still is very, very good. But it would be really, really good if we could beat the odds and get a deal with the devil that gave us Guppy the most powerful transformation conceivable in the game here. We're not going to get Death's List here, but we would be a fool not to try. We screwed it up. Somebody somewhere died. Probably a spider hit him. Anyway. I really should keep up on the E3 announcements, because I always end up in this situation where, you know, it, it, it was different. Uh, like, when we ran Roundtable, it was much easier to keep your pulse on the finger of what was happening in the industry because you were doing it every week you know it's like working out it's a lot harder, easier to stay in a routine than it is to start up a new one but now like i didn't really follow last year's e3 either so sometimes people are like oh i'm really excited about uh this new game my friend pedro and i'm like my friend pedro i've never heard of it and they're like oh really like there's been a hype cycle around it for like a year and a half it comes out next week or, i don't know maybe i've got it figured out 
<laughs> maybe, maybe I get to avoid the awkward period of, of waiting for something that I hope is good and instead just being like, hey, a great game just came out. Congration, you have just completed a great game. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm better or worse than anybody else. I'm just saying, this is how I do it. This is how I do it. Slightly objective influencer. I don't like calling myself an influencer either, but you gotta go with the tide, you know? Uh, content creator, I thought it was a fine name. Uh, not, it's not snappy. Like accountant, that's a good name. Probably, I manage accounts, is probably what they said. Then some, uh, you know, Jimmy McGill type went, I'm, a, I'm an accountant. You know, that was a masterstroke from a branding perspective. I thought content creator, it did the job. Sure, it's not a perfect title, because everybody creates content. You know, everybody that works in media in any form. Yo, we beat the odds. Yo, it's pretty good. But now, Influencer, I, you know, it, it still does the job. I and mean, it's not like I'm actually upset about it, but like, sorry, my, I really need some WD-40 for this thing. Um, it still does the job, but I don't like being called an influencer because it uh, defines... I prefer not to call myself an influencer because it defines me by the role that I play to publishers and advertisers. You know, at the end of the day, yeah, I make my money through ads, partly, for sure, but also through providing entertainment to viewers. I see myself as somebody who creates content, not somebody whose purpose is to drive his audience to, you know, act in a certain way in order to purchase something and raise uh, stock price. Not to say I've never done sponsored deals, just saying, you know, I... First and foremost, at, at the spirit of what I do is creating entertainment. And I try to remind myself of that basic principle. Sometimes you lose it for a bit. You know, maybe you've recorded 50 to 60 Slay the Spire losses in a row and you start to think, you know, the pressure's on to have a big win. Then you gotta remind yourself. Not, I mean, it is. I'd love to win. But at the same time, people aren't watching you. Or they sh Great damage there, by the way. They shouldn't be watching you to see a, a huge Slay the Spire win. They should be watching you because they get entertainment out of watching you. They find it uh, enjoyable, entertaining, funny, etc., etc., something along those lines. You know, you try to keep people's minds occupied instead of just being like, I'm playing well. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm a good influencer. I don't know if I, if I move copies, you know what I mean? I know that people tell me, like, I bought this game because of you. And that always feels good, because whenever that happens, it's games I, you know, I'm a big believer in. Isaac Spire, Gungeon, you know, many others that I can't think of right now. Um, but I don't, that's, that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm in it for. I don't, I mean, I don't, like, pitch myself at all, to be honest. I, like... You know, sometimes companies contact me and they're like, well, contact my <laughs> my publicist. <laughs> Who lives in a big glass building in downtown. No, he doesn't. He's just a regular dude. But, um, where was I going with this? Oh, they, they contact me and they're like, hey, do you think you'd be a good fit for this? And I go, I don't know, dude. Here's the thing. Can I be entertaining doing what you're asking me to do? Yeah. So they, yeah, if you believe in that, let's make it work. But if you're like, you got to... You got a quota of keyboards to sell. Maybe I'm not your guy. And I accept that as well. Mostly because the bounty board exists. I don't need you. I got Twitch. I, th I think they need an anti-bounty board. Because there's been a lot of bounties for Twitch things. What they need, in my opinion, and this is not a joke, is to pay me not to play some games. Like... If you pay me not to sing, that's the real galaxy brain. Because I'm not devaluing your platform. You never know. I'm Like, I'm not a good singer is what I'm trying to say. So you never know. Maybe some, uh, oh, Elon Musk is browsing the old Twitch.tv. He's thinking about becoming an angel investor, a platinum level sponsor. And then he comes to my stream and he hears a, Court is in session. The verdict is in. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. No appeal on the docket today. It's just a my own sin. You know, and then he goes, ooh, what is this? Garbage website. 
Hear the thunder in the distance. See a vision of a cross. I loved singing uh, My Own Prism by Creed. And uh, 1,300 people coming to the realization suddenly that Creed was a Christian rock band. Yeah, it's true. I don't know how they fooled you. Because it's, it's kind of always been in there, you know? I think it's always been in there, at least. This is a great opportunity. Okay. I'll take it. Um, but yeah, Creed. Dude, they're, they're like edgy Christian rock. They're like, you know, when I was like 10, Christian Rock was like, you know. He'll be coming round the mountain when he comes, Jesus. He'll be coming round the mountain when he comes, that's God. You know, but now, when I was around like 12 or 13, started to get people like Creed that were like, yo. I talk about archangels and stuff. Scott, stop! Stop! You're gonna get in trouble! Okay. Here's what you do. You rely... Well, you you cry out to Ed, seeking only his decision. Gabriel standing in the... Okay, is it... But I'll still go to bed. I think it's like... It's a decent Creed song. I'm happy for the golden bombs. You kick the golden bombs in there. I can't believe, like, it's, it's pretty minor, but our DPS has really, really stalled out. We're lucky that, you know, it, like, stalled us on the top of a hill, so we can just use gravity to roll down, but... It was, uh, you know, we, we've lost a lot of momentum as time has gone on. I mean, we fought Mom at 17 minutes. It's taken us almost that much time, then, to get through the next three floors. They're longer floors. But still. I see my moment. Okay. You got two options. You give me DPS or you give me a fast path to the boss. I would take either. No. No. Okay, I think we did get spun. Um Honestly, I think our HP is totally fine. So I'd rather up our damage by taking Guppy's head. And I hope now you're seeing NL doesn't put on airs in Isaac, okay? If the run's bad, oh, let me rephrase. If I call a run bad, it's because I truly believe that the, you know one aspect of it that's being called out is not very good. That's where we're at right here. Now, we do have uh, a decent luck stat. It's Dad's ring that freezes enemies, now that I think about it. We do have a decent luck stat, so I'm expecting, you know, not not entitled to getting item drops here, but expecting them to have a pretty decent chance to show up. Don't rush me! Don't rush me! This is really, like, when somebody asks me how I feel about 8 Rate of Fire, it changes so much depending on where in the run you are. This is what 8 Rate of Fire feels like on the chest. At the start of the game, 8 Rate of Fire is like you have a freaking uh, minigun. You're like, I'm never going to complain about my damage ever again. 8 Rate of Fire at the end of the game is like, you know, you're firing a gun that shoots bullets made out of peanut butter. They're always getting jammed up. Please. That was only our second room. <laughs> ah! uh, lucky Penny. Told you. Okay. Less enemies, even if they have more HP, is probably a good thing. Come on, just give us a ray to fire up, dude. We've been crushing it from the perspective of death's list. This is like the most death's lists I've ever made work. Okay, just stand in there. Drop some bombs. Probably shouldn't have even taken it, but whatever. Oh, dude, never mind. Okay, all complaints are now off the table. We uh, we screwed up Death's List as well. Or not Death's List, uh, Empty Vessel. 
All complaints are off the table. They gave us an easy path to the boss. So I, I really, really appreciate that. Okay, Deathslist uh, gave us a key there. Very solid. <laughs> Sorry, just don't let your impatience get the better of you. Like, we're going to win. The only question is whether we're going to win uh, in a way that we can be proud of or if we're going to, you know, let our emotions get the better of us and we're going to take a bunch of damage that we don't need to take. You know, just... Don't be a child, you know? They gave you the win. They just gave you the win so early that it felt like they left you in the lurch later. But really, it's just that you opened your presents on December 23rd. So on Christmas Day, you're like, you know... Hey, where's my presents? I didn't get any presents. This is BS, Mom! You said you'd get me chocolate milk and you didn't. That makes you a liar. We just got our presents early. Let's think of it that way, you know? That's all right. Use the demon heart. We're good. That run was fine. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. I'll see the great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya.